Good. Hi, friends. Today we have a special guest. She's a real American hero. This is Sergeant Carrie Bauer with the North Huntington Township Police Department. She is here to tell us all about what it's like to be a real American hero every day and keep people safe and help our communities. So everybody sit back, relax. You'll love this. Thank you, Ms. Hope. Hi, my name is Sergeant Carrie Bauer, like Hope said. I'm a police canine officer with North Huntington Township and I have my very special partner with me today. And I think everybody can guess what my very special partner is. He's a German Shepherd, he's a police dog, and his name is Zargo. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him in a minute, but first, I wanna tell you about being a police officer. And then, once you become a police officer, you get to get to that extra step if you really do wanna be a canine officer, and if you're fortunate enough and work hard enough, you can get that dog and be that canine officer. You pick the right department to work in. So, anyway, I am a police canine officer, I'm a police officer first, and everybody know what I'm wearing? This is called my uniform, okay? And on my sleeve, these are my patches. Notice it says police department up here, and down here, if any, everybody can read, it says canine unit. And then below there is my sergeant stripes. That means I'm in charge of my shift, okay? So, going on with my uniform, that is my pants, my shirt, and this is my bulletproof vest, okay? So, there's a lot of neat things with the bulletproof vest. We used to wear them under our shirts, now we wear them over our shirts. So, it enables me to carry a lot more equipment up top as well as on my gun belt. So, first of all, we'll start on my bulletproof vest. You can put a lot of different things up here. Some officers actually put their gun up here. I chose to put my tourniquet, which is a special uh, piece of equipment for emergency first aid if somebody would get hurt. Okay, so I keep my tourniquet there. I keep my rubber gloves in here, okay? And let's see what else. I keep pens and pencils, and I could put extra bullets in here if I want. Uh, I do have that access to store other things in here. So, moving on, everybody knows what this is, right? This is my badge. This is a symbol of authority. This is North Huntington Township gives me the police powers when I wear this badge. Now you're gonna see my partner also wears a badge when he comes in and it gives him special police powers for North Huntington Township. Okay, and as you can see, it says police K-9. K-9 means canine, which means dog, which means best job in the police department. Okay, so moving right along, this is my gun belt, and we're going around my gun belt. Let's see what's in here. Who knows what these are? Hmm, I'll give you a hint. They go inside the gun. Yes, they are bullets. Okay, and we carry lots of extra bullets with us. Actually, there's 15 bullets there, and it's called the magazine, and there's 15 extra bullets in this magazine in case I should get into a firefight, which hopefully never will happen, but I will be prepared. So, moving right along, next is my gun. Everybody can see my gun. It's pretty cool. It even has a flashlight on it. Okay, yes. And one thing about guns, boys and girls, we never, ever, ever touch a gun. If we ever see something that we think could be a real gun, we go get mommy or daddy or the closest adult. We never touch it because it could hurt us or it could hurt somebody else. So remember that, never, ever touch a gun. They're only for grown-ups. okay? So moving right along, let's see what else I have here. Hmm. Anybody know what these are? Yes, these are handcuffs. They only go on really bad people, really bad men or women, okay? They don't go, they're not toys, they're very heavy, they're strong, and if you're really bad and I have to arrest you, I put them on you. And yes, they've been on lots and lots of people. Okay, let's see what else we have going around the gun belt here. Okay, all right, let's see here. This is my walkie-talkie that's right or my police radio and it has a microphone up here which is nice so every time I want to talk I don't have to pull it out and push the button I could put it right back in the holster and I can do all my talking here and I'm gonna give everybody an example of how the walkie-talkie works okay you ready I'm gonna call the dispatcher who tells us what to do where to go and gives us our calls and I'm gonna give a radio check and see how he responds okay 
C. I'm car number 17 and badge number 17. So when I call, I'm gonna say badge 17 to 521. 521 means our dispatch center. Okay, ready? Let's see what happens. 17 to 521 radio check. Okay, he said loud and clear at 1526. 1526 means 326 p.m. That is military time, okay? So, pretty cool, huh? Moving right along. Let's see what else we have here. All right, who knows what this is? No, it's not hairspray, okay? This is pepper spray. This feels like 10,000 needles jabbing you in your eyes if you have to get sprayed with this. Is this for good people? No, it's for bad people. This is for criminals. If you decide you wanna fight with me, I can spray you in the eyes with this. You won't be able to breathe and you won't be able to see. It temporarily, not forever, it just temporarily uh, takes you out of commission so that I can arrest you, put the handcuffs on you and take you to jail. So that is another alternative I have, okay? If I need to, but I have lots of alternatives. Okay, so moving right along. Oh. This is my super duper top secret button. I don't tell anybody, so shh, you can't tell people what this is, okay? But when you push this super duper top secret button, something special happens to the police car. Anybody wanna take a guess what happens? Hmm, think about it for a second. Hmm, it helps me get my partner out. That's your, that's your hint. Okay, so when I push this button, the back door on the police car will open, and guess what? Here comes the dog! Okay, pretty cool stuff. So in case I would pull somebody over for speeding, or I would be out on a call and somebody decided they wanted to fight with me, guess what? As soon as I push that button, the fight's over, because as soon as people see the dog coming, they go, I give up! I don't want to fight with you, I don't want to get bit. Okay, all right, pretty cool. All right, so. Moving right along, so that's my gun belt. Now I have another really cool thing here. This is called my taser. And this shoots, not bullets. Who knows what this shoots? Hmm, doesn't shoot bullets. It shoots electricity. Pretty neat. Now, if I have this on like this, I can actually shoot the electricity in somebody. But if I have it off, it's called a dry stun, okay? And what happens is if you watch the side of the, the gun, you're gonna see the electricity in the gun. And if you decide you wanna fight with me, I can just touch you with the electricity and you're gonna hurt really bad and you're gonna quit fighting, okay? So let's see what happens. And a really cool thing too is look at the red dot. Oh, see the red dot on the, on the wall? So wherever I point the red dot, that's where it'll shoot if I have the other part on the cartridge on, but I don't have the cartridge on. So let's just see the side, the edge of the, uh, the taser there, guys. Pretty neat, can you see that electricity? No. You do not want to get touched with that electricity. I can't see it. Okay, let's try it again. Ready? No. See the red dot? Hold All on. right, let's see if we can see the electricity. I know you can hear it. Ready? Okay, maybe the camera can't see it, but there's actually a current of electricity going through there. So, this is something else that I can have to protect myself with if I need to. So we have gun, taser, pepper spray, and oh, I forgot one thing. I knew I forgot when I was going around. Okay, this is my police baton. Hmm, doesn't look like a police baton, does it? Well, guess what? Is all I have to do is go like that, and it comes out. And now I have a striking tool. So if you want to fight with me, I have like something I can strike you with, or I can break a car window if I have to rescue somebody. So it has a lot of cool things. Pretty neat, it just folds right up. And again, it goes and comes right up. So that's on the back of my gun belt also. So that's all the cool things that I have. That's all of my equipment for being a police officer that I wear with me every day. And again, this is a bulletproof vest, this whole vest on the outside. That'll protect me in case somebody shoots me. And do you have a knife? Do I have a knife? I do have a knife, but I do not have it on me right now and it goes right in there. I'm glad you asked that question, Miss Kim. <laughs> I usually do carry a knife with me also, yes. So this is my equipment. Now I'm gonna go to canine Zorgo's equipment.
Okay, there's a few things that we use all the time with canines Argo. And for you to understand that, I'm gonna go into what he, he knows how to do, but first, who can take a guess what this is? Okay, this is the same thing that I'm wearing. This is Argo's bulletproof vest. This will keep him safe if somebody tries to shoot him, and this will also keep him safe if somebody would try to stab him with a knife or try to hurt him. So this is a wonderful piece of equipment. The only thing is it's very uh, cumbersome. It's not real heavy, but he can't, his skin can't breathe when it's on. So we only wear it when we know we're going to a serious call and we might have to, he might have to bite somebody. It might be a bad person. And we're gonna go over that with what canine Zargo knows how to do. But we do have Zargo's bulletproof vest, just like my bulletproof vest, and it's in with the, the car with me at all times. Now, we also have his tracking harness, and that's what this is. Now, we're gonna go into tracking in a little bit, but he wears this over his vest, and this goes under his belly, and then he has a long line on, and he will go find somebody whenever I tell him to track. And I think we're gonna to get to show you a track today, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Okay. So that's it about me, and we're going to store it into Canine Zargo. You want to take a break or you want to? Okay, boys and girls, we're back here with Canine Zargo. Now, Canine Zargo came here from another country called Holland. He came here on an airplane. He had to leave his mommy and his daddy and his brothers and his sisters to come here to be my police dog. He came here when he was about a year and a half old, and our police department bought him, and I started training with him. Now. Right now, Zargo is four years old. When I got him, his name was Argo. And that's a pretty popular name for police dogs. So I wanted to find a name that I thought would suit him better. But I didn't want to change his name too much because he had to leave everything that he knew to come here. So I started with the alphabet. I started with, I went past A and went to B. I thought, hmm, does Bargo sound good? No. Cargo, no. Dargo, I went all the way till I got the letter Z and I came up with Zargo. And I thought, boy, I like that name. Kind of sounds like a superhero. So that's why I call him Zargo. And he took to it right away. He liked the name too, because as soon as I called him that, he started listening to me. As you can see, he has a lot of love for me. And he's four years old and he goes home with me. He gets to sleep next to me. He has a dog bed next to my bed. So when he goes home, can every boy, boys and girls, can you see his badge that he has on his, on his um, chest? Okay, his badge is just like mine, which gives him police powers, just like me to protect you and keep you safe. Uh, but when he goes home, he takes the badge off and then he's a dog just like your pets. I actually have a little chihuahua. He's only 11 pounds who really does not like poor Zargo, and Zargo loves him, but the little chihuahua bites him and is really mean to him, and it's really funny to see, and Zargo just ignores him. Because of course, Zargo could hurt him if he wanted to, because he's so much bigger. But Zargo says, that's my brother, and he's a little crazy, and he just accepts him, so it's, it's all good at home. But again, when he's home, he's just a big pet. Unless you try to come into my house without an invitation. You would never want to open up my front door and try to come in without me saying it's okay because Zargo would be there to greet you. And his number one job is to protect me. And his number two job is to protect everybody else out there. So, and he has a lot of other cool things he knows how to do, but protection is number one. As you can see, he does have teeth, just like you and I, and he can use them. And we do use the teeth on the dog to bite. However, what's more important to us is their nose. His nose is at least 500 times stronger than my nose or your nose. Now, let's see, what does that mean? Say, for example, your mommy or your daddy are cooking dinner, okay? And you go home and the house smells really good. It smells like maybe apple pie. It might smell like a roast or a turkey or fish, whatever they're cooking. Well, you smell usually the strongest odor. When Zargo comes to that house, he smells everything that's cooking. He can actually smell everything in your kitchen. So, if you're having mashed potatoes, he can smell them. If you're having corn, he can smell that. If you're having salad, he can smell that. Smell that. So his nose can break down every single odor. So imagine what happens when Zorgo walks into a room and there's all these different smells. If we train him, we can teach him to find anything we want, okay? But he's only trying to f train to find one of two things actually two of two things, okay? Human scent or drugs. 
And we're going to go over human scent first, okay? So the human scent is every single person on the whole entire planet smells differently to Zargo. Now, to me and you, we all smell the same, unless we didn't take a shower or put perfume on. But to Zargo, we all have a different smell. So as all he has to know is the last place that uh, you were seen, if you're missing, if it's a lost person or if it's a criminal trying to hide, is all we have to know is the last place you were, and Zargo can track and use his nose and find you. And he does that with that tracking harness on, boys and girls. Remember I showed you that that goes over his back? You want to grab his tracking harness? Um, Miss Hope, it's right over there. We can go over that again. Now, when he, again, when he has that on, off ball. And notice I'm talking to him in a different language. You have no idea what I'm saying to him because he came here. Thank you, Miss Hope. Oh, he's all excited. He wants to put this on and he wants to go track somebody. Get in. Or off. Now, that's a different language. I told him to lay down. Because he came here from Holland, they speak Dutch. So his language is actually in Dutch, his commands. So I had to learn his commands. Okay, so everything I tell him, number one, the bad guy doesn't know what I'm telling him, but number two, he responds to it better because it's from his country. So he does know English too, just from me yelling at my chihuahua and telling him things. However, when it comes to police work, all of his commands are in Dutch. So this is his tracking harness, okay? This, when he goes across his back, he knows by when he has this harness on, it's time to use his nose to go find somebody. Now look how excited he's starting to get. The cool thing about a police dog is everything they do is fun. Whether they're fighting the bad guy, their tail's wagging, or they're finding somebody, or finding drugs, everything he does is play in his mind, okay? So I have to tell you, I do have the best job out there. And you know when you like to go to work, boys and girls, you really don't call it a job. Okay? So it's really not work. Like and Mrs. Things. Beck and Mrs. Brow. <laughs> <laughs> so you never have to go or work to work a day in your life if you like what you do. So very important when you decide what you want to be when you grow up, pick something that you like that you're going to enjoy. And you know what? If you try and you work hard, there isn't anything out there you can't do. Okay. And Zargo and I have proven that because I always wanted to be a canine officer and I have my police dog. Now, he, again, enjoys everything that he does. So this is the tracking harness. Now, if he gets to the track, say it's a lost child or a lost older person, when he finds them, he has this on. And guess what that means? When he finds you, he's gonna lick you and his tail's gonna be wagging, he's gonna be all happy, but he's not gonna hurt you. Now, if he has his bulletproof vest on, which I left down below, uh, it has a, a ring on it also. Get in, I know, he, I know you wanna do it. Oh. Okay, when he has his bulletproof vest on, okay, it has a ring on it and he tracks it that's on his back. Then when he gets to the end, then it's no more Mr. Nice Doggy. He might have to bite you, so he acts differently. So he knows when he has his bulletproof vest on, he's tracking a bad person. When he has his tracking harness on, he's tracking a good person. So it's collar association. He associates this with happy, fun, off. And this is again happy, aggressive fun. <laughs> a little bit different, okay? <laughs> That's the bad and it's guy. all fun, fun to him, no matter what he's finding, okay? So again, he loves to go to work. When I'm at home, and I told you his bed's right next to mine, and I start getting ready for work, he is watching me. His nose is as close to me as it can be, and he sure hopes that I put any part of this uniform on. And as soon as I put these pants on, his tail starts wagging, and he's by the door ready to go. If I put jeans on, he just goes over and lays on his bed and pounces. So he knows he's not <laughs> gonna get to go to work. So that's pretty cool. And he learned that through repetition. The more we do it, the more he learned it. And that's another thing, boys and girls. If you wanna get good at something, what do you have to do? If you play the piano, if you play baseball, or if you play the trumpet, whatever. If you wanna get good at it, you have to practice, right? Well, that's what Zargo and I do. We practice once a week for four hours. So when we practice, we call it training. It's the same thing. It's everything Zargo is trained to do. So we will practice at night so one week. During the day, we'll go out in the snow in the, when it's real hot. Because you know why? You never know when a bad person's going to commit a crime. And you never know when an innocent person could get lost. So we have to be prepared. If we don't train for it, we can't expect our dogs to do it. 
And that brings me to another thing that I forgot to tell you. In here in North Huntington Township, we are lucky enough to have not just Sargo, we have three canines. We have uh, Sergeant Wardman, who has canine Rocco, awesome, awesome Belgian Malinois. And we also have Officer Nichols, who has his new canine, Ivan. We just retired canine Nero, and he now has canine Ivan, who's also a Belgian Malinois. Awesome dogs. They look a little bit different than Zargo, a little bit smaller, but all three are great police dogs. And hopefully you'll get a chance to see them someday out in the public. Okay, so let's go back to what I was teaching you. So we use him mainly for his nose. He's trained to find human scent, that's missing people or bad people, and he's trained to find one other thing, it's called drugs, okay? Now, we have a difference, there's different kinds of drugs. Of course, we have good drugs. When you go to the doctor and you hurt yourself, you might have to take some medicine, okay? The good drugs are called medicine. The bad drugs we never refer to as medicine. They're just bad drugs. And if anybody ever, ever wants to give you bad drugs and you know it didn't come from the doctor, boys and girls, you never, ever want to take it. You want to let your mom or your daddy know right away, okay? Because these bad people that have these drugs like to hide in different places, and that's where we have our police dogs use their nose and they can find them, which is really, really cool. And guess what? We're going to get to show you a drug search here real soon. Okay, I'm not going to bore you much longer with my talk. I know you're going to want to see that. You're also going to get to see the back of the police car where Zargo gets to hang out on our shift. And by the way, he works with me every shift I work. So when you're home at night sleeping, nice and safe in your bed, that's because Zargo and I, or Sergeant Wardman and Rocco, or Officer Nichols and Ivan are out protecting you. Okay? And that's his number one job, like I told you, is to protect, keep everybody safe. And look, he's so happy. Is anybody afraid of him? I mean, look, he's just, Zarka, hello. <laughs> he's just a happy boy. Okay, there's nothing to fear if you're a good person. So, let's go over the, um, let's see, what do we need to do? So, if you're a bad person, say, for example, you decide you're going to rob a bank, and you run out of the bank, and we pull on scene in our police car, I'm going to give you three warnings to stop. And if you don't stop, guess what's going to happen? Yep, Zargo's coming after you, and he's not going to lick you when he gets to you, okay? So if you decide you're a bad, we're going to be a bad person and rob a bank, you can plan on getting bit by Zargo, or like we say, apprehended. Now, say the bad person that robbed the bank well, is running away, okay? And all of a sudden, whatever part of their body Zargo gets to first, he's going to apprehend or bite. So if he gets to the back of their leg first, he's going to bite them there. If he gets to the back of their arm first, he's going to bite them there. If he gets to their butt first, guess what? He's going to bite him right there in the butt, okay? He doesn't care, but he's always trained to bite from the shoulders down. Never, ever from the neck up. That's We don't want to leave any permanent marks on anybody from their neck up or hurt anybody. It's just to stop the person until we can get the handcuffs on them and take them to jail. That's what we use the police dog for. As you can see, he brings more joy to people than he does pain, that's for sure. We go and we walk through the businesses. You might see us at Target or walking through Walmart or we're in the schools all the time walking, just saying hi to everybody because he loves his job and he loves to be around people. Okay, I think, uh, did I miss anything, Miss Kim, Miss Hope? I don't think, I think that was great. Okay, so let's go see Zargo do a drug search, okay? Again, these are very, very bad drugs. And if you've ever come across anything this, like this, boys and girls, you let your mom and dad know. And if anybody ever tries to give them to you or wants to sell you drugs, you let your mom or dad know or any adult know as soon as possible that's a figure of authority in your life, like a police officer or your aunt or your uncle or your grandma or your grandpa. Okay? All right. Well, let's take Zargo down, and you're going to see a really, really happy dog right now because he loves to buy drugs just like he loves to do everything else. Okay. Should we keep going? Can I carry it back? This is back. What? Are you going to hide something for Zargo to find? I am. I am going to hide some drugs. Oh no! Yes, they're over here, Mrs. Brown. They're in this special police case. Normally, I would never touch drugs, but Sergeant Bauer said it was okay to touch these ones because we're going to hide them. Hey, Mrs. Brown. Maybe I can hide one under the table. Oh. There's a magnet on this to hide. 
Is it sticking? I think it is really sticking. Mrs. Brown and okay. Sarko won't be able to see it. Let's hide the other one in the cupboard. Oh, good idea, Mrs. Brown. Sarko could never find it Let's in here. Let's see, Mrs. where are you going to hide it? I'm going to hide it right here. Okay. Here, because I don't really have to hide it because the door's going to shut Mrs. Brown, right? True. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. Beck, I don't think Maybe Sarko you can... will ever find it there. Should I go tell Sergeant Bauer we're ready? Why don't we? Okay. Let's go get Zargo. Sargo is outside with Sergeant Bauer. That must be the magic door that pops open. drug search for you. We can do it one of two ways. We can do it on lead or we can do it off lead. Now I've already given the command. I kind of whispered in his ear what I wanted him to do. So he already knows what we're going to be doing. We're going to be searching for drugs. And when he finds it, his command is, you're going to see his breathing's going to change. His tail's going to be wagging. He's going to spend a lot of time there and he's going to sit. And that's his indication to me that he found the drugs. So let's see if he does that. And hey, wait, okay? Sergeant Bauer. Our friends already know where it is. Because oh, they do? Our friends do, but Sargo doesn't. No, because I don't know either. So. I, you okay. don't know because when you were outside taking them potty, Mrs. Beck hid the drugs. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's see if Sargo... Oh, his nose is already working. You can see it in the air. You think we can find some gifty? Ready, set, gifty. Gifty, buddy. Oh, find a gifty. <coughs> <Bible? Nope. laughs> Okay, I'll pass all this favorite equipment. Oh. Does that mean he knows where it is? Oh, does that mean that it might be in there? Hmm, let's see. Hmm, I'm guessing that's where it is. That's where he's telling me it is. Okay, let's see if he can find the next one. You ready, Zorgo? Find Gifty. Come on, buddy, you got that one. Come on, find Gifty. Oh, boy. Come on, let's go over here. Come on, buddy. Okay, here. That's a good boy. He found it. Yes, he did. Well, good boy. That's where it and used this to is be. The container where the yeah. drugs were hid. That's a good, good boy. boy. Yeah, buddy. Let's see if you can find the next one. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Find Gifty. Where's the next one? Over here. 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 Come on. I'll check here. I'll check here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think. Should we give Miss Toy? No, I think we should really give Miss Toy. He's so oh, good. Good Zorgo. Oh, that's a boy. boy. Yeah, buddy. Good boy. Oh. Here's a girl. That's a boy. Mrs. Beck, let's see. Where did you hide those? Well, right You're here, right. Mrs. Brown? Yeah. And there's some under the table over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's here. see. He found both of them and the container. Yes. Let's see. And the container that they yes. were in. Yes. Let's put them back in the container. Yeah. And yeah. Sergeant Bauer said we could open the door to her police car. Ooh, let's look I in know, there. I know. I've never been in a police car. That's a good thing, Mrs. Beck. Oh, doesn't look. It doesn't look like a good place to be. No. I oh, look. That's here's because his, that's for I think Sargo, here's Mrs. Water. Brown. That, that is really cool. Sargo has his own place to ride. Yeah. That's okay. really neat, isn't it? All right, then Sargo loves to get in his car, so I'm just going to give him the command. Sargo, load. Come on, buddy. Hop up. Sargo, hop. Hop. Good boy. Hop. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Yeah, you need a drink, huh? <laughs> so anyway, boys and girls, I want to thank you for your time. I have the greatest partner in the whole wide world. And just all try to be, strive to be a little bit more like Sargo. Let's all strive to be happy all the time, to do the right thing, to, pre to protect each other, and just be the best person we can be. Aww. Thank you. Thank so, you, Sergeant so Bauer much, and Sargo. Bye, Sargo. Bye. Thank you. Thank so you. Much.